Hi guys, welcome to another video and in this one we're going to discuss five ways that you can improve your black and white photography. So if you've watched any of my previous videos you've probably guessed I'm a great fan of black and white photography and in fact it's actually where I started. I never wanted to be a colour photographer. I had no desire at all to shoot colour images. All I wanted to do was shoot black and white. So when I did my first bit of formal training in photography, I trained in black and white photography. It's the thing I wanted to do. So I started off shooting black and white negative film, mainly 35mm, which I then developed myself and printed in the darkroom. Um, and it was a wonderful experience. But obviously things have changed and we now have digital cameras which can produce outstanding black and white prints. But the thing is, you need to tweak a few settings just to help you get the most out of them. So really, in this video, I'm just going to go through five different things that will ultimately help to improve your black and white photography. I'm not going to say it's necessarily going to make it better, but it's going to make it a little bit easier. And especially if you're a beginner, uh, it will make it easier for you to see in black and white. Keeping in mind that I used to do a lot of developing in the dark room, you would think that the ideal format to set my camera would be raw because I'm going to do lots of post-processing which is kind of true but what I'm going to suggest for the very first tip is that you set your camera to JPEG and raw capture. Now the reason being this that once you've set your camera to JPEG you can then select a monochrome picture style. Now I'm going to show you the difference that makes. So I'm going to film the scene in front of me in the standard colour profile of this Panasonic S5 camera and now I'm going to go into a picture style and I'm going to change it to monochrome D which is my preferred profile on this camera for monochrome and straight away you can see the difference that stripping the colour makes because now we can see more the shape and forms and texture of the scene in front of us Basically, it's very easy to be blinded by the colour in the, within a scene and that can make black and white photography very difficult. But if you just simply by setting your camera to JPEG and selecting a monochrome picture style, what you're doing, you get rid of all that colour, you know, and straight away it's easier to see in black and white and that's half the battle. Now that we've stripped the colour from your preview image, Work on the principle that you use the mirrorless camera. If you're not using the mirrorless camera and you're using a DSLR, you can actually use your live view to see the same effect. So, you know, you can still do it, but it's just far easier with a mirrorless camera. So now that we've removed that colour preview and we've just seen it in black and white, then what we can do is purely concentrate on the composition. So here, what I've done is I've composed a shot of the three poles out at sea. I've photographed them before. They're the favourite spot of mine. I, I do love this beach. Um, but, but I've narrowed the composition right down just to these three poles, a little bit of water, a lot of sky, very, very simple composition. And to simplify it even more, what I've done is I've fitted a 10 times neutral density filter just to blur the water out a bit. Now this isn't essential, it would work out, but you know, it's just, it adds to simplifying the shot. And I think with black and white photography, that's really the key. Less is more, keep your shot simple, keep your composition nice and pure. Just think about texture, form, shapes. So of course once you've composed your shot you then actually need to physically take it. When shooting black and white you're going to have to be prepared to probably do quite a lot of post-processing. That is unless you're happy with the JPEGs coming out of the camera. Now actually I love the JPEGs out of this Panasonic S5 but I still have to do a bit of dodging and burning which is basically lightening or darkening certain patches of the shot. So really it makes sense to try and get as much information as possible into that file. A bit like if when you were doing film photography you got the sort of perfect exposure for the negative. It's just it's good practice. So this shot's actually backlit so it's caused me a bit of bother. So what I'm trying to do is make sure I've got a good amount of information really in all of the water and the sky. They're just enough to work with later. So it's a case of just religiously checking your histogram, you know, and trying to expose to the right as much as possible. What you don't want to do is you don't want to lose any highlights, because if you lose any highlights, you obviously you can't bring them back. If you're overexposed, you're absolutely scuppered. 
but really you also don't want it to be too dark that you sort of your shadows are all blocking up because then when you try and lift them whilst you probably will be able to lift them up a bit you'll introduce noise so yeah just be conscious of your exposure check your histogram and just make sure you get it as much information recorded in that file as possible then you've got plenty to work with Try photographing something different to what you would normally photograph. The beauty of black and white is you can actually experiment far more and even the most mundane things will actually look really nice in mono. Now here I'm just doing a simple detail of some pebbles on the beach and I think in colour it really won't work but stripping it down to just the shape and form and almost texture of these rocks and I, th I think in monochrome it actually looks really nice. So it's something I'd highly recommend and it's, it's a great way to get those creative juices flowing. As you shoot more and more black and white images, you start to understand how colour translates to monochrome. But really, my fifth tip is to keep this in mind. And really, it doesn't actually apply so much at the time of taking. It's normally at the time of processing. So this shot here of the Red Life Boy, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the process shot up with a straight conversion. But then I'm going to put a shot which basically replicates using coloured filters. Which, if you were using film, you'd use a coloured filter in front. But if you use like Room or Photoshop or something along that way, what you can do is you can actually duplicate coloured filters. So I'll just run through a sequence of the different coloured filters so you can sort of see what difference it makes to the way the colours are recorded into the final black and white image, if that makes sense. And this is a great way of controlling contrast. Now, sticking on the subject of contrast, this is one thing you need to think about your final images. Do you want it to be quite high contrast or do you want to be quite soft or do you just want to be middle of the road it can make a huge difference to a monochrome image and again this goes back to the days of film when you used to choose your grade of paper to actually print on some people back in the day used to use like a multi-grade paper so they could have certain points nice and contrasty and other bits a bit softer well, it, this is easy to do in sort of Lightroom so this is the beauty of doing things digitally And there you have it, five ways they can improve your black and white photography. Uh, think of them as tips as you would like. But really, it's all about just getting your mind thinking a little bit, isn't it? Here's a final one bonus tip for you though. Try setting your camera to a square aspect ratio. Now, you could find this a little bit restricting, but what it does, it basically it sort of mimics the golden days of film. Think traditional medium format, six by six black and white images. You know, and there's something timeless about a black and white shot in a square aspect ratio. The, the two go hand in hand. You know, square shots existed way before Instagram did. So yeah, I do recommend you give that a try. Anyway guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you've got something from it. Uh, really for me the main one is, try setting your camera to RAW and JPEG and then setting your picture style to a monochrome picture style. And you may find at the end of the day that you use your JPEG files, but you may just still just use raw files. But the beauty is it does give you the facility to see monochrome images at the composition stage, and that makes life so much simpler. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up, leave a comment if you've got any, ask me any questions if you wish, and us. See you again in another video. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and goodbye.